Okay, so let's finish off this section uh, with a few little comments um, about the conjugate gradient method. Um, what's good about it? What are some limitations and what we might, what we might do about it? So the first thing uh, is that the conjugate gradient method works. It finds a minima, um, even in cases where Newton's method may not. So in particular, you know, we've talked about cases um, throughout here where A is positive definite, um, and then it, it just works. It converges the end steps towards the minimizer, but it also works if A is positive semi-definite uh, as well. Um, so that's the you know, equals zero case. Um, so in the cases where A is positive uh, semi-definite, you may not have a unique minima um, and you may not have minima at all. It could just, you know, the surface could just go down and down forever. Um, but, uh, you, you know, in, in cases where you do have a minima, where that function Q uh, has a minima, the conjugate gradient uh, method will find one of those minima. Um, whereas, as we've seen with Newton's method before, even though we haven't talked about uh, Newton's method in multi, um, in higher dimensions, you know, Newton's method may not find a minima in that case. Um, so that's a case where um, you can actually get some results out of conjugate gradient, uh, even uh, in cases where Newton's method doesn't. So that's the first thing. Um, you know, this is a bit of a limitation uh, of the conjugate gradient method. You know, it takes, um, uh, it, for quadratics, it takes n steps to get to the minimizer, uh, where n is the dimension uh, of, your, of your problem. By contrast, Newton's method uh, in higher dimensions, actually for quad quadratics, um, and we've proved this for, uh, for one variable, it takes only one step to get to the minimizer, right? And that's how we, that's because of how we constructed it as a quadratic, um, you know, uh, ex um, uh, expansion of, of, of Taylor series for a function. So Newton's method is quicker, right, for, um, uh, for quadratics, in that it, it only requires one iteration to get to the minimum uh, compared, to, compared to n, but it requires you to calculate the Hessian. Okay, so an advantage of conjugate gradient is that I never actually needed to calculate the Hessian. I don't actually need to calculate, even calculate the matrix A, because I only ever need A times U, uh, A times the conjugate uh, direction U. So really I can just store those. So it's more of, a, it's much more computationally efficient uh, in terms of like memory, in terms of the things that you need to save. So Newton's method, you know, requires you to calculate the Hessian all the time, which you might not be able to do, or it's 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 likely to be a, a, a huge um, to actually store that thing, whereas you don't need that for conjugate gradient. So that's the advantage. Uh, the next one, and here's actually a, um, an application of conjugate gradient method um, that you don't necessarily hear about uh, all the time. You can actually use it for linear algebra. Um, so the conjugate gradient method you can actually use to solve AX equals B because the minimizer, um, uh, because the stationary point of a quadratic function is when AX plus B equals zero, you can turn that around. So solving AX plus B equals zero is really just um, solving when AX equals negative B. So you're really doing linear algebra here. And the fact that you can do that in N steps uh, means that when N gets large, um, you actually solve AX equals B fast. And now that is really, really important. So there are, as you've probably um, got, some, uh, got some suggestion of from all the courses you've taken already, linear algebra is just uh, used everywhere. You know, it's, um, it's fundamental in physics and engineering and all across all of these different um, application areas. And so solving large systems of linear equations, being able to do that efficiently is a really, really important thing to do. And so you can get huge speed ups um, for, for high dimensional physics problems or high dimensional engineering problems by using something like a conjugate gradient method. It's actually really powerful. The next one, yeah, you can, um, we haven't talked about preconditioning uh, matrices, but you can actually speed up um, and make um, the conjugate gradient method it, uh, sort of more stable and con um, by, by choosing a particular pre-multiplying uh, matrix K that you stick in front of A, it's called preconditioning. Um, you can look that up later as a way to actually make it even more efficient. Uh, more fast uh, computation than it is. Um, and, you know, something I won't talk about, but you can do, you know, I've talked, we've, we've talked all about here, symmetric matrices A. There are extensions of the conjugate gradient matrix, uh, conjugate gradient method to non-symmetric matrices A. It's called the biconjugate gradient algorithm. Um, so, yeah, it, it is generalized but beyond even the stuff that we've, uh, we've talked about here. One other thing to say is that, um, 
you might think you might be thinking at this point in the course, what is the point of all of these um, these nice efficient algorithms? This is very nice mathematically, but minimizing um, uh, minimizing quadratic functions is something that I you know I can do that using steepest descent, and maybe I don't actually care about a clever method to solve that because I can just throw more compute um, at this problem. I can just take lots of steps. Um, with my uh, steepest descent algorithm or some other gradient descent algorithm, and I can get close to the uh, to the minimizer. So maybe I don't care about um, conjugate gradient. But the fact is, in the history of, of science over the last um, uh, you know, uh, 30, 50 years uh, or so, the improvements that have been made, the reason that we've gotten better um, and that uh, computers have gotten more advanced at solving problems like this and gotten better at doing things like machine learning is partly because of compute. So, right, so the, the, the red line here shows you Moore's law, which says that, you know, processing power increases uh, or doubles at roughly every 18 months or so. So that's, um, you know, the exponential growth of um, sheer computing power uh, on the red curve there. But actually taking advantage of that compute are increasingly clever optimization methods. And the, um, the, the computational efficiency that's been gained um, over the last 30 to 50 years in terms of cleverer and cleverer methods um, is, go, is proceeding at roughly the same rate um, as what Moore's law has been. So you can, you can say that half of the advances in computing uh, over the past 50 years have been just raw computing power and you know, squeezing more um, processes onto a chip. Uh, but that's only half the story. The other half of the story for actually being able to do um, machine learning and being able to do um, uh, high performance computing better and better and better is through the development of these new algorithms. So this conjugate gradient method actually plays an important uh, role in the history uh, of computing uh, over the past half century or so. Um, now, just finally, an important limitation of conjugate gradient is this limitation that it only, everything I've derived, only apply, applies to quadratic functions, right? So as soon as you have a function uh, that's not quadratic, you can apply a conjugate gradient method to it, but it's not guaranteed to, uh, it's not guaranteed to work or to do anything. You know, the whole theory is derived, derived around quadratics. So all of those nice prop properties that we have are only for quadratic functions. So that is a limitation, but it's, you know, it might not be so bad. You know, if you can imagine um, uh, locally, so even if you have some complicated um, uh, uh, cost functions, some complicated landscape surface that you're trying to find the minima over, you know, uh, uh, in, in some local region, you know, it's, it, it's, it's often pretty good to approximate um, that, uh, that cost function by a quadratic. So close to, uh, close to the point that you're at, it's a reasonable thing. Um, to do quadratic approximation can work pretty well. So you can, um, so you can still apply this and you will find local, uh, local minima you know, sort of close to where you are with this conjugate gradient method and we'll do it pretty um, efficiently. The other thing to say is that um, we can actually take this one step further. So the next step in this journey is now that we've developed this cool method um, uh, for minimizing quadratics, Quadratics, are, you know, the quadratic um, functions are just one term in a Taylor series expansion, in a Taylor polynomial expansion of a general function. So the next thing that we're going to talk about uh, is how to use um, an extension of the conjugate gradient uh, method. It's called the fletcher reeds algorithm to find minimizers to general functions. And the tool for that is going to be the Taylor series. And we're going to go up to quadratic terms as we always do with these things. And we'll end up with a pretty, uh, another neat method. So, that's the next place uh, that we're going to go to.